Hello everyone, this is Dama from School of Engineering Science at Simon Fraser University. Today I'm going to present our recent work about the cascade dual branch deep neural networks for retinal layer and fluid segmentation of the optical coherent tomography. Here shows some background information of this study. Optical coherent tomography or OCT is a non-invasive medical imaging technique that's widely used to detect and monitor pathologies from retinal disease such as the layer thinning and the fluid accumulation. So accurate segmentation is very important to help physicians to achieve fast and accurate diagnosis. Our model is trained to segment the OCT images into five retinal layers and one fluid class, and we term it LFUNet. So in terms of methods, our approach consists of two cascaded network. The first run segment the top and bottom boundaries of the retina. And then a pixel-wise positional map related to the initial segmented retinal boundaries were computed and used as an additional channel to the second round to segment the full five retinal layers and the retinal fluid. And the proposed dual branch network architecture is a combination of the UNET and the original version of the fully convolutional network or FCN. So both parts shared the same contracting part while the expansion part is further split into two parts. The UNAP part branch concatenated the feature maps from each of the contracting and expansion blocks, while for the FCN branch, it add the feature maps from the max pooling layers in the contracting part and the up convolutional layers in its expansion part. So the final layers of the two parts were then concatenated and fit into a dilated convolutional networks to capture three different levels of receptive fields. In terms of training and evaluation, we use three adjacent V-scan slices as the initial network input. The loss is then calculated as the sum of the weighted dice loss and the weighted logistic loss. Adaptive moment estimation or ADN was used to control the learning rate for fast convergence. And the training is stopped early if the accuracy ceased to increase up to five epochs to prevent overfitting. And finally, we evaluated our methods on 58 OCT volumes with tenfold volume-wise stratified cross-validation. And this slide shows some of the example results. The figure on the left shows the comparison between the ground truth segmentation as shown in the middle column and the segmentation from our results as shown in the right column and demonstrating high level of similarity. While the figure on the right further shows the improvements using the proposed cascaded framework as shown on the right column over the initial round of the segmentation as seen in the middle column, it can be seen that the jump in the segmentation boundaries for the inner retina layers has been corrected by the cascaded network. For quantitative evaluation of our proposed methods, two performance matrices were used to compare with the ground truth. First, the dice index of each segmented labels as shown in the top panel, and then the surface distance of each segmented layer boundaries as shown in the bottom panel. So if you can look at each of the subplots, the left four blue bars represent the performance of the vanilla unit. The middle four orange bars shows the results of the state-of-the-art retinal OCT layer segmentation methods, the RelyNet. And the right four purple bars and the two green bars are our proposed methods, either with or without the fluid segmentation included. And if you look within the each of the four bar group, the two dark colored bars on the left are from the single channel B-scan input. And the two light colored bars on the right are from the three adjacent B-scan input. And within each of the pairs of the bars, the left comes from the first round of the segmentation and the right comes from the cascaded segmentation. As you can see from each of the subplots, significant improvement can be achieved by progressively adding each part of the proposed methods. And finally, I would like to thank the collaborative team from Simon Fraser University for everyone's contribution to the work presented here. And thank you all for listening.